limited microphone is on correct. The broadcast of the regular meeting of the Minneapolis City Planning Commission will now begin. Very good. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, welcome to the April 13th, 2020 City Planning Commission hearing. My name is Sam Rockwell, uh, and I serve as president of the Minneapolis City Planning Commission. Uh, and we'll call the meeting to order. The time is now 4.33. Uh, in lieu of recognizing uh, the commissioners who are here with me, I will ask the clerk to please call the roll for attendance. Caprini. Here. Dunnick. Here. A Smiley. Here. Lipke Pier. Here. Marwa. Here. Meyer. Here. Olson. Here. Schrader. Here. Sweezy. Here. Rockwell. Here. All 10 commissioners are here. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, our next order of business today is to approve the minutes uh, from the March 9, 2020 City Planning Commission uh, meeting. And I have Commissioner offer a motion to approve those minutes. Uh, Commissioner Sweezy. Mr. President, I move approval of the minutes. Commissioner Smiley. I second that. We have a motion and a second. Uh, commissioners, is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. <clears throat> Caprini. Yes. Dunnick. Aye. A smiley. Aye. Lipke Pier. Aye. Marwa. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Olson. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Sweezy. Aye. That's five yeses and four no's. I mean, I'm sorry. That's that's nine yeses and zero no's. That would have been an astoundingly controversial. Yeah, uh, exactly. minutes. <laughs> um, thank you very much. Uh, uh, next on our agenda, um, which I uh, should mention just to anybody who's tuning in, uh, our agenda is posted on the city of Minneapolis uh, website at limbs.com minneapolismn.gov under the uh, Minneapolis City Planning Commission uh, section of that site. Uh, next item up on our agenda uh, is labeled under consent, but it is actually a report back uh, from the City Planning Commission nominating committee, uh, Commissioner Sweezy. Thank you, Mr. President and Commission uh, Commissioners. The nominating committee uh, met online and received applications and nominations for three people to fill the three officer positions. Um, that is uh, President Rockwell for the president spot, Commissioner Luke Pierre for the vice president spot, and Commissioner Alyssa Olson for the position of secretary. And I would uh, move those nominations um, as a uh, as a slate if it's appropriate. Uh, that is appropriate. Do we have a second to that motion? Commissioner Marwa. Mr. Marwa, if you unmute yourself, we've got to have a, uh, a verbal confirmation of all the motions. I second that motion. We're good. We have a motion and a second. Uh, commissioners, is there any discussion on this motion? I think that has no discussion. Uh, our clerk, please call the roll. Caprini. Aye. Dunnick. Aye. Smiley. Aye. Lipke Pier. Aye. Marwa. Aye. 
Meyer? Aye. Olson? Aye. Schrader? Aye. Sweezy? Aye. It's 9 0. Very good. That motion carries. Uh, next up, we uh, will organize the agenda for this meeting. Um, and I will uh, walk through for the folks uh, on the public on the phone, uh, the full agenda here, each agenda item that is open for uh, public hearing uh, and walk through uh, each agenda item. If you wish to speak on one of these items uh, and have not previously registered yourself uh, for that item, uh, please speak up when I get to that item on the agenda. Uh, you speak up by hitting star six on your phone line. Uh, you'll become unmuted and you can uh, let us know that you wish to speak on that item. Otherwise, the items will be placed on the consent agenda. Uh, um, And for the items we have, uh, please move my phone. Please move to my phone. All right, can everybody hear me? On the telephone. All right, very good. Uh, sorry, I'm switching, switching to uh, switching to a phone here, so my my uh, audio is better. Uh, so uh, please, uh, if you wish to testify on an item, uh, um, unmute yourself uh, by using star six and move, uh, and let us know that you wish to speak on that item. Otherwise, we'll be placing. Uh, uh, items on the consent agenda. So uh, items uh, five through ten are not uh, uh, subject to the public hearing and will be placed on the consent agenda. Consent agenda. Next item up is item number twelve, the H. Alden Smith House and Apartments at fourteen hundred Yale Place, forty five Spruce Place, and fourteen oh three Harmon Place in Ward Seven. Is anybody here to speak on item number twelve? Here we go, and we'll place item number 12 on the consent agenda. Item number 13, the Rogers Market and Deli at 2007 Glenwood Avenue in Ward 5. Is anyone here to speak on item number 13? Here we go, and we'll place item number 13 on the consent agenda. Item number 14, it's an adult big care conversion at 3100 Lindale Avenue North in Ward 5. Is anybody on the line to speak to item number 14? There no one will place item number 14 on the consent agenda. Item number 15 is the American Swedish Institute, 723 to 731 27th Street East in Ward 6. Uh, parking lot approvals. Anybody here to speak on item number 15? Hello. Uh, um, this is, I'm sorry. This is Bruce Karstadt, the CEO of the American Swedish Institute. Yes. I just uh, simply so want to. Yep. We will, uh, um, for people wishing to speak on these items against the items, uh, oh. against the recommendation of staff. I should have oh, started there. Uh, speak okay. up, and right. we will yeah. open this up for uh, the consent agenda for people wishing to speak in favor of any of the items on the consent agenda. If you wish to oh, play something on the record, okay. <laughs> that is... I just wanted to support it remaining on the consent agenda. So thank you for the clarification. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, item number fifteen. There's no one wishing to speak contrary to staff recommendation on item number fifteen. Correct. I'll take that silence as confirmation and place item number 15 on the consent agenda. Uh, and again, uh, 
uh, we will place items on the consent agenda unless we hear people who wish to speak against staff recommendations. Item number 16, the Developmental Achievement Center at 116 East 32nd Street and 3128 3136 Stevens Avenue in Ward 8. Is anyone here to speak against staff recommendation on item number 16? There are none. I'll place item number 16 on the consent agenda. Family Tree Clinic is item number 17 at 1925 Nicolet Avenue in Ward 6. Anybody on the line to speak against staff recommendation on item number 17? Take that silence as a no and place item number 17 on the consent agenda. Item number 18 is Visitation Monastery at 1619 and 1621 Fremont Avenue North in Ward 5. Anybody on the line to speak against staff recommendation on item number 18? I'll take these silence as a no and place item number 18 on consent. Item number 19, which is the North Loop Green Phase 3 at 405 and 408 4th Avenue North, 328 and 330 4th Street North in Ward 3, will be continued uh, to the April 27th, 2020 City Planning Commission meeting. Uh, did I hear somebody speaking up on the line there for a moment? Right. Item number 19 will be continued, will not be heard today, uh, to April 27. Um, item number 20 is 911 West 24th Street in Ward 10. Is anybody here to speak on this item? Hearing none, we'll place item number 20 on the consent agenda. Item number 21 is the Leaf South at 187 to 199 Irving Avenue North and 190 to 198 James Avenue North in Ward 5. Is anyone on the line to speak to item number 21? Hearing none, we'll place item number 21 on the consent agenda. Item number 22 is Paris Hill at 1930 Hennepin Avenue in Ward 7. Is anybody on the line to speak against staff recommendation on item number 22? None, I will place item number 22 on the consent agenda. Item number 23 is the Port Portland and Washington mixed use at 240 Portland Avenue and 500 to 530 3rd Street South in Ward 3. We will discuss item number 23. Item number 24 is the KIPP North Star Academy at 505060 Oliver Avenue North in Ward 4. Anybody here on the line to speak to item number 24? There are no one, I'll place item number 24 on the consent agenda. Item number 25 is the HCMC addition at 716 7th Street South in Ward 7. Is anyone here to speak on item number 25? There are none, I'll place item number 25 on the consent agenda. Item number 26 is the Dakar building at 1626 East Lake Street and 2940 17th Avenue South in Ward 9. We will discuss item number 26. Uh, hi, my name is Rob Cernick. I'm a neighbor and I'd like to speak about item number 26. Very good, we will we will place that on our discussion agenda. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, item number 27, the Ox Op signage at 1111 Washington Avenue South in Ward 3. Is anyone here to speak on item number 27? Okay, now I'll place item number 27 on our consent agenda. Item number 28 is 3026th Avenue North in Ward 5. 
Is anyone here to speak on item number 28? Hearing none, we'll place item number 28 on consent. Item number 29, Roadrunner Records, 4534 Nicollet Avenue in Ward 8. Is anybody to speak in opposition to staff recommendation on item number 29? And now we'll place item number 29 on the consent agenda. And item number 30, Calhoun Towers, 3404 and 3430 List Place, 3441 31st Street West, 3140 Abbott Avenue South, and 3421 uh, West Lake Street in Ward 13. Anybody on the line to speak in opposition to the land survey, item number 30. All right, very good. Our agenda as amended is as follows. Uh, we will discuss items 23 and 26. We will continue item 19 to April, the April 27th Minneapolis City Planning Commission hearing, and we'll place on consent items number 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, 21, 22, 24, 25, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Commissioners, may I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended? Uh, Commissioner Smiley. I move to um, uh, approve the agenda as amended. Uh, do I have a second, Commissioner Luke, you care? Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. Clerk, please call the roll. Caprini. I will be abstaining from item number 24. Okay. And how do you move on the rest of the items? Oh, aye. Thank you. Dunnick? Aye. A smiley? Aye. Lipke Peer? Aye. Marwa? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Olson? Aye. Schrader? Aye. Sweezy? Aye. All the items are 9 0 except for 24 with Caprini abstaining is 8 0. Very good. That motion. Passes. Uh, next up, I will open the public hearing on the consent agenda. Uh, I'm not sure that anybody wanted to speak on that, but I will pause for a moment in case anyone wishes to speak on the consent agenda. Again, if you wish to speak, star six, there was one person who indicated uh, maybe wish to speak, uh, but I think just to keep an item on the consent agenda. All right, I will take that silence as uh, no wish to speak on the consent agenda. I'll close the public hearing on the consent agenda. Uh, commissioners may have a motion to approve the items uh, consistent with staff recommendation on the consent agenda. Commissioner Smiley. I move to approve. Uh, do we have a second, Commissioner Olson? Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Caprini. Just so I'm clear, the item num number 24, I still abstain. So if I say yes to um, approving the consent agenda, it doesn't change the way that I voted for that item, correct? Correct, it doesn't change it. Okay, aye. Dunnick? Aye. Smiley? Aye. Lipke Peer? Aye. Marwa? Aye. 
Meyer. Aye. Olson. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Sweezy. Aye. That's nine zero, except for item number twenty four. It's eight zero with Caprini abstaining. Very good. That motion passes. Uh, next, uh, commissioners could have a motion to continue item number nineteen to the April twenty seventh City Planning Commission hearing. Commissioner Smiley. I move to continue item 19 to April 27th uh, meeting of the Planning Commission. For a second, Commissioner Olson. Second. Very good. We have a motion and a second to continue item number 19 to April 27. Uh, Clerk, please call the roll. Caprini. Aye. Dunnick. Aye. S. Miley. Aye. Lipke Pierre. Aye. Marwa. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Olson. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Sweezy. Aye. That's nine zero. Very good. And that motion carries. Uh, next up, we have our uh, items for discussion. First up is item number twenty three, uh, which is the Portland and Washington mixed use at 240 Portland Avenue and staff is mailing Smith mailing the uh, virtual floor is yours. Thank you, President Rockwell and good evening commissioners. My name is mailing Smith and I'm presenting on behalf of CPED. The, the project is called Portland and Washington and the address is 530 South 3rd Street. Um, the subject site. Oh, sorry, slide please. So the subject site is located along Washington Avenue South between Portland Avenue and Fifth Avenue. Slide. Um, as you can see in the photos, it currently contains a commercial parking lot and also fire station number one, which is currently in operation. Slide. The proposed development includes two buildings. It's the first one is a 23 story tower with 238 dwelling units and also commercial space along the ground floor fronting Washington Avenue South. The other building is a seven story residential building um, that has 90 affordable units, also a new fire station and a principal parking facility. The site would provide off street parking for the tower and for the fire station, but not for the affordable units um, that are in the low rise building. Slide please. So staff is recommending a number of conditions of approval as part of the requested conditional use permits and site plan review, and most of which the applicant has agreed to. The applicant would like to discuss two conditions, number eight and number 10 of the site plan review. Um, it's, it's also, and it's also condition number two of the conditional use permit for, for a principal parking facility. Um, so number 10 is the one I'll start with, and this one requires a thin fiber cement panel on the low rise building to be to be replaced with a more durable material. Um, and as an alternative that relates to the alternative compliance requested for exceeding the number of materials allowed per elevation, staff is recommending that this thin painted fiber cement material be replaced with something that's more durable that would better fit into the context of downtown. Um, and this is a material that is more commonly seen in low density residential neighborhoods. The letter submitted by the neighborhood group also calls attention to the usage of this material, and they're recommending that a more durable material be used. Slide, please. Oh, sorry, and one more, please. Thanks. Um, and here's an elevation that kind of shows you where the fiber cement would be. Um, placed on the base and also at the top of the low rise building. Slide please. So here's the site layout that shows you the three um, access points for vehicles. So one is fronting on Portland to the east, Third Street on the south and Fifth Avenue on the west. Staff is recommending that one of the curb cuts be eliminated and that that it should be the Third Avenue South curb cut on the south. Um, the uh, 
TDMP, the travel demand management plan submitted by the applicant, shows both scenarios, one with two access points and one with three access points. And there is very little difference in the level of service between um, those two scenarios. There was maybe a one second difference during the peak hour. So staff is recommending um, that that be eliminated to, you know, um, enhance the pedestrian and bicycle environment, and also it, it would enhance the quality of the building and it wouldn't have an impact on traffic circulation. This is also confirmed by studies that have been done inter internally by property services and traffic. And this concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any other questions. Thank you very much. Uh, Mailing commissioners, are there any uh, questions for staff at this time? Uh, Commissioner Smiley. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair and uh, Mei Ling. I just have a quick question about this item. Uh, I know this item was also on um, the, because of the fire station, uh, it was on CLICS um, uh, review last year for um, uh, capital budget programs, and there was a comment on this item. Uh, and that was basically related to uh, the uh, combining of a, a fire station with the residential unit in which in this case is the lower tower tower which has the affordable housings in it. Uh, so the there was a I have a question about the equity um, outcome in that and um, whether or not there are specific mitigation effort happening uh, to minimize the uh, noise and or any um, negative impact from having a fire station right in, uh, under residential units, which is like there isn't any similar one uh, in the city as I uh, believe, right? Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Smiley. Um, I wouldn't really be able to speak to the details of what's being done I understand that there, it's possible that they might be um, constructed kind of as separate buildings altogether, and I think that would most likely be the case. I'd like to have the applicant answer that question directly about any mitigation strategies because I'm not aware of them. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, commissioners, are there any other questions for staff at this time? All right, seeing none, uh, thank you very much, Mei Ling, and I'll ask the applicant to, uh, uh, I guess, ask our uh, our staff to help the applicant unmute and uh, and speak. There are three speakers registered um, to speak. The first one is Robert Logan. Robert Logan, if you press star six to unmute and state your name for the record and proceed with your comments. All right. Um, good evening. This is Bob Loken with ESG Architects. Can I, am I being heard? You are being heard. Thank you, Bob. Yes. Great. Okay, great. Um, I, I guess, first of all, um, I'll just uh, thank the commission for um, for all being here and taking this process really seriously. I've never uh, been happier to hear your voices, actually, so it's uh, uh, reassuring. So. Um, I think I'll speak first on Rare the, praise um, for the commission. <laughs> I think I'll speak first on um, Commissioner Smiley's question about um, noise mitigation between the housing and the fire station. Um, I guess I will say that um, we haven't quite gotten to the level of detail where we would look at specific um, sound mitigating assemblies, um, but I will note that the Fire station is um, separated from the housing by thick concrete construction and um, both floors and walls. And, and that the fact that it's affordable housing actually um, places a bit more scrutiny on the noise uh, based on some of the funding mechanisms. There are, um, and, I, and I don't know these exact performance standards, but there are performance standards related to um, um, basically uh, acoustic transmission from exterior environments to interior environments. So um, I can't answer the specific question, but know that 
that it is on our um, on our development team's mind and that there are um, agencies and standards that will um, that will also come to bear in this. Is that, does that help to answer the question? Yes, thank you very much. That was very helpful. Okay, great. Um, well, I guess I'll speak first. Uh, I mean, I guess I'll say I, I'd like to um, Thank um, Mei Lang for um, a really nice staff report, and we're very grateful for the for the overwhelmingly positive staff report. Um, and there's just a couple of conditions that we would like to speak about. So I'll talk first about um, the curb cut issue, um, which I believe is condition number eight of um, site plan review, and also uh, condition number two for the CUP for principal parking facility. They, they're kind of um, have the same language. So um, this has been, you know, probably the most discussed aspect of this development as we've um, been going through committee of the whole and, and working with staff and public works and traffic. Um, and we do recognize that the, the third street curb cut is a um, somewhat of a convenience to the owner, but what, what, what we'd also like to present briefly, hopefully tonight, is that we think that there's public benefit um, to having this curb cut as well. And I did upload a um, an exhibit, a graphic exhibit. Wonderful, thank you so much. Okay, so this first, basically there's just two slides and they show um, our proposed condition with an entrance on Third Street and, and then the alternate condition where that entrance is um, removed. We can stay on this first slide for right now. So sub subsequent to the TDMP, um, our, our team, including our um, um, traffic consultant, did a, a, an analysis of event night traffic. Um, and the, primarily the reason why our development team um, is desiring the third street entrance is to handle um, event traffic, basically overflow from if, if there's an event at um, um, at the stadium and the um, um, and the parking ramp, the municipal parking ramp adjacent to it is full. Um, what happens right now? This is a this site is currently a surface parking lot. What happens now is that the overflow traffic comes down Third Street, looking for a place to park, and the overwhelming um, majority of that traffic entering parking. Um, in the 15 minutes prior to an event and also in the, the peak hour prior to an event, um, enter through that third street entrance. And the data we used to study this was um, taken from August 2018 um, during two events. One was a weekday concert and the other was a Saturday afternoon preseason Vikings game. And basically what the, what the data shows is a distinct spike in traffic entering the parking lot from the third street entrance um, just before the events. And the and so maybe we could go to, so you can see right now um, that yellow um, arrow on the bottom is representing auto traffic that's entering from third street. You can also see that there's, um, uh, we're also pointing out the, the presence of the Gateway Transit Center, which is on Fifth Avenue between Third Street and Washington. And then also you can see the uh, fire station here highlighted with the um, nicely colored fire trucks. And so what what we what we perceive the public benefit to be is that um, allowing um, those peak loads of parkers to enter from Third Street, um, especially during an event, will limit the number of vehicles that then have to enter what is often a very congested block of Fifth Avenue between Third Street and Washington. And our concern is that if, if, if everyone who is coming from, um, uh, from the stadium wanting to park in this facility um, then turns on Fifth Avenue uh, and has to enter there, that it could uh, result in vehicle queuing potentially in front of the fire station doors. And um, the other benefit would be keeping additional automobile traffic off that block would also remove a potential uh, conflict with the many buses that enter and exit the Gateway Transit Center. I 
Um, we haven't discussed the specificity of the Third Street entrance or the merits of that specifically with Metro Transit, but early in the development of this project, they were concerned enough about um, the potential for increased traffic here to um, to meet with our team and reach out with us um, about their concerns about potential impacts to the um, to the transit facility. Um, so I, if we could go to the second slide. I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing a, another slide. Maybe my, my screen, my broadcast is delayed. Are the commissioners seeing a, there's a second yeah, slide? Yeah, currently there's a, a 30 second delay. So we're seeing one okay, with, a, with a red X across the entrance on yeah. third. Okay, I'm familiar enough with that exhibit to talk about it. So here you can basically see that um, it's representing that traffic from Third Street having to turn right from Third Street onto Fifth Avenue um, and then enter the parking facility from Fifth Avenue, um, adding additional um, cars, particularly during that 15 minute and 60 minute um, peak uh, vehicle load prior to events. So I think that's so. So basically, what we're doing is we're, um, you know, we're requesting that this condition of approval be omitted. And note that um, um, this is the not um, um, this this hearing and and this approval or denial of this uh, feature of the project here in this forum um, does not uh, preclude the fact that we still need to um, work this project through. PDR with public works and traffic. So uh, what we're simply asking is that this specific condition be removed from, um, from site plan review. And then Mei Lang, let me know if you would like me to stop speaking about this condition and let, and let um, the commissioners discuss this, or if you would like me to move on to um, discussing, discussing condition number 10. I I think we can keep going, Bob. I'll let you know if there are commission questions uh, that come up. I can see I can see folks kind of raising their hand on the platform okay. we're using, um, and okay. so I will uh, I'll let you know. Otherwise, we can hold questions to the end. So you can okay. continue great. on to uh, all right. The next so seven condition materials. number okay, great. Thank you. So condition number ten uh, states that the elevations of the low rise building shall be updated to replace the thin fiber cement panel with a more durable material. Um, basically, we're, what we'd like is for this um, condition to also be uh, removed primarily to allow us um, flexibility in working with staff on this. Um, it's, it's, it's really more the specificity of this um, request for this item that we're worried might um, sort of tie our hands as we're, as we're, as we're working to, to satisfy staff about the design of this building. I'll note that um, the building does contain a lot of brick, and I know that in the committee of the whole meeting, uh, the commissioners were were largely um, supportive of the exterior design and appreciative. Granted, we didn't talk specifically about um, fiber cement. I don't know if that was obvious to the commissioners, but I think that um, regardless, there's a lot of brick on this material. It is a handsome building. And a durable building, and we would uh, we request that this uh, condition be removed. And that's all I've got. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Commissioner Lipke here. Yeah, um, Bob, I had a question. And uh, looking at the exterior elevations in question, can you talk a little bit about the ground condition of the plinth? I I know that in the um, past, we've seen the use of fiber cement board on um, upper story, usually set back portions of residential buildings, but um, we haven't seen a lot of it at the ground level. And it looks in the rendering as though you have um, almost like a water table, and then and then that, and and then the brick. So, can you just talk about what's the what's the material where it meets the ground, and then how high is that, and then how high above that is the second material, which I assume is the fiber cement panel, but maybe you could speak on it. Yes. Yeah, got it. I mean, there were def de we will definitely not bring fiber cement to grade. Um, let me take a look at that um, exhibit right now to familiarize myself with it. And I don't know if the this might be a good time to to change slides so that 
so the commissioners can see. That would also allow me time to get there as well, but um, bear with me. Um, yeah, uh, if you look at sheet A15, it shows a rendering uh, that's a, a close-up detail of that of that specific area. Okay. That might be helpful. Got it. Okay, A15. Got it. That's where I am. So yeah, so so basically that water table, that bottom two feet, it's possible that we haven't clearly defined what that material is. That would be masonry of some type, either brick or or possibly stone. And the dark gray material above it is is the fiber cement in question, and it is a combination. You can see that there's um, some some deep trim that that borders it. So it's the basically the field of that material that is the thin fiber cement, and the trim would be um, a, a, a much thicker uh, uh, fiber cement, sort of trimming that out into uh, kind of a framed expression, and all of those materials will be painted um, uh, in place as well. And then, Bob, what would it be trimmed out with, for example, if it was fiber cement panel in those recessed areas? Like, what kind of reveal are we looking at, and then what material is it? Uh, the material would 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 be fiber cement as well, but um, but a but a trim piece which comes in in thicker profiles. I'm not sure the exact dimension of it, but it could really be any any dimension that we choose. What what it, what it appears to be in this rendering looks more like, you know, it might be an inch and a half or two inches of a of a change in plane, perhaps more. So it would be instead of being sort of boxed out with with additional thin fiber cement, our intention is that that trim piece is our solid pieces that are that are applied um, adjacent to the to the thin fiber cement. And then I'll also note that th the condition appears to apply also to the thin fiber cement at the upper story of this building as well. And then Bob, okay. just one yep. more question then. Sorry, just I, so is the yep. same material then carried between the windows? I see where there's some of that same color material in the rendering. Is that also the same material or Correct. is that just? Yep, that would be the same same material, painted fiber cement. And, and that's a detail we, we use actually fairly often um, in particularly in that in that application in a, um, between windows. Um, it's it's fairly common. We used that on the uh, 205 Park project. And we also did that, I think. I can't think of another project right now, but I know that we use that detail on 205 Park. And Mayling, does the condition apply to that as well, or just the upper and lower portions of the building? Yes, it's a blanket condition, so there's no specificity between upper and lower or between windows or anything like that. So that's something you could specify if that's if you wanted to. Thanks. Commissioners, are there any further questions of the applicant? Um, I, I have one quick one. I, uh, the, the advantage of working at home is you have all your home office materials here. Um, the transportation action plan, which is, is granted in draft form, but the city of Minneapolis's transportation action plan uh, is articulating a wish, uh, an intent for a bus only lane uh, on Fifth Avenue between Washington and 10th Street. Um, and it strikes me that that would change the, the condition, at least for fire trucks entering and exiting the, uh, the fire station in that they would be able to mm -hmm. enter into and out of a bus lane, regardless of mm -hmm. how much game day traffic was there. Uh, have you taken that into account in thinking about this uh, or or in how that kind of interfaces with this project? No, that's that tap request is new information to me. I don't believe that came up in in the PDR process. So 
that would be new information to me and it would, I mean, I think it would certainly, might certainly assist the fire department in, um, in exiting um, easily. But I also know that, you know, for instance, a hook and ladder truck as it's exiting, I assume has a very wide swing and would probably need to use several lanes in order to, in order to exit. So, no, I, right. I can't, I can't speak specifically to that bus land because that's new information to me. No, uh, and it's, you know, it's not a final plan. So, uh, uh, got it. So we'll see, okay. see if that ends up being in that final, final draft. Um, very good. Uh, commissioners, any further questions of the applicant? Otherwise, I will open it up to uh, the public. I'm not sure if there's anyone here to testify. I don't see any other questions coming from commissioners. Uh, so thank you uh, to the applicant. And as they open the public hearing, is there anyone? Uh, the next speaker here? in queue is Ross Steitley. Ross Steitley, press Ross. star six. And please state your name and address for the record. Ross Stately, are you on the line? We cannot hear you if you are. Star six unmutes you. Hi, my name is uh, Ross Stately from Sherman Associates. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. I I apologize. I tried to. <clears throat> I signed up this morning and tried to withdraw my name as a speaker after uh, coordinating with Bob Logan on his presentation. I don't have anything further to add. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody else wishing to testify? I'm not sure if the clerk or anybody else is, is in line here. All right. I assume that we don't have anybody else uh, who pre uh, pre signed up. Uh, and it doesn't sound like anybody has happened into this. So with that, I will close the public hearing. Mr. Uh, Chair, I think, Mr. Chair, I think we might have one. one more. I just want to make sure that we check the queue before we close that hearing. Sorry. All right. Why don't we check the queue? Wes Beeler. Wes Beeler, press star six. And state your name for the record. This is Wes Beeler, ESG Architects. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. All right. I, I was just uh, also kind of like Ross registered on deck. Uh, Bob did a good job covering the point, so thank you. Very good. Uh, okay. Uh, is there anybody else in the queue? No, Mr. Chair. The queue is clear. The queue is clear, and nobody has uh, unmuted themselves, so I will close the public hearing. Uh, commissioners, we have a uh, number of applications before us. Um, would anybody like to start us off with discussion or with a motion? Several conditional use permits and site plan review. Uh, Commissioner Lippy Pierre. I mean, I have a question for May Ling. Go for it. All right, uh, May Ling. Uh, I'm just wondering. Have have I can't recall in my memory, um, but maybe you know. Have we um, that you can recall ever approved of fiber cement panel on the ground floor application of a of a mid range density building before residential? Um, I'm sure I'm sure it's happened. Um, we don't have regulations that prohibit that necessarily. We regulate it through the maximum durability per elevation of 30%. And this this um, project does comply with those maximums. So um, we're tying this more to the number of exterior materials that they have and trying to kind of rein, rein that in from an aesthetic and durability standpoint. Um, I could also maybe turn it over to Ms. Helene and maybe she would have um, greater recollection of specific examples um, if you'd like to chime in. 
Um, I'm sure we have. I know we have ex plenty of examples where we've allowed it on um, like a six story building. Um, I can't give you an address off the top of my head, but. Thanks. Very good. Are there any further questions? Uh, somebody have an item for discussion or does somebody wish to make a motion? We have five conditions before us, three CUPs, site plan and plant. Commissioner Lukey Pierre. All righty, I will move uh, the conditional permit, or excuse me, conditional use permits for A, B, and C. We have a motion uh, to approve conditional use permits A, B, and C, and I assume that is with the various uh, stated conditions, suggested conditions yes. by staff. Yes. All right. Uh, we have a motion and uh, we have a second, Commissioner Sweezy. I second uh, the motions to approve items A, B, and C with conditions. We have a motion and a second to approve items A, B, and C, the three conditional use permits with all stated conditions. Commissioners, is there any discussion? Seeing none, uh, clerk, please call the roll. Caprini. Aye. Dunnick? Aye. Is Miley? Aye. Lipke Pierre? Aye. Marwa? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Olson? Aye. Schrader? Aye. Sweezy? Aye. We have oops. Nine yeses and zero noes. All right, that motion carries. Uh, uh, Commissioner Meyer. I move uh, approval of staff recommendations for item D uh, with the 12 conditions listed. All right, we have a motion to approve site plan review with the 12 stated conditions. Uh, do we have a second, commissioners? Commissioner Smiley. I second that. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Caprini. Aye. Dunnick. Aye. Ms. Miley? Aye. Lipke Pierre? Aye. Marwa? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Olson? Aye. Schrader? Aye. Sweezy? Aye. That's 9 0. That motion carries. Uh, commissioners, we have one more item on this agenda item here uh, preliminary and final plat. I'll move staff have, recommendation uh, for item E, uh, the preliminary and final plan. Commissioner Meyer moves recommendation, uh, staff recommendation on item E for approval. Plot. Do we have a second? Uh, Commissioner Olson. Second. Very good. We have a motion and a second for approval of the preliminary and final plat. Any discussion? None. Clerk, please call the roll. Caprini? Aye. Dunnick? Aye. Miss Miley? Aye. Lipke Pierre? Aye. Marwa? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Olson? Aye. Schrader? Aye. Sweezy? Aye. It's 9 0. Very good. Uh, that motion carries and that concludes our business with item number 23. Uh, before taking up our next discussion item, item number 26, 
uh, staff has uh, very helpfully uh, reminded me that I noted that we do not have a public hearing on items number five through 10 are the land sales. Uh, and then I promptly did not put them on the consent agenda. So um, could I have a motion to approve the consent uh, items five through 10, uh, the land sales? Commissioner Smiley. I move to approve uh, the consent items for land sales items five through 10 of the agenda. Very good, and Commissioner Cerisi. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve the land sales items five through 10 on the, uh, on the agenda. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Caprini. Aye. Dunnick. Aye. Ms. Smiley. Aye. Lipke Pierre. Aye. Marwa. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Olson. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Sweezy. Aye. It's 9 0. I just said a whole bunch of stuff while my phone was on mute. I apologize. <laughs> Next up is item 26, uh, the Dakar building at 1626 East Lake Street and 2940 17th Avenue South and Ward 9. Staff is Lindsay Silas. Lindsay, the floor is yours. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, the site before you is 1626 East Lake Street and 2940 17th Avenue South. Uh, these parcels are located at the intersection of 17th Avenue South and Lake Street. Um, they are separated by a public alley that the applicant has proposed to vacate as part of the proposal. The, uh, both sites are zone C1 and the site has split guidance in 2040 uh, with the 1626 East Lake Street parcel guided for corridor mixed use and um, corridor six and then the 2940 parcel guided for interior three and urban neighborhood. Uh, the the proposed design, as you'll see, um, does kind of respect that split guidance with a building that steps down from five stories to three stories um, at the midpoint of the proposed vacated alley. So the building itself would contain 36 dwelling units and uh, 4,755 square feet of commercial space, which is divided into uh, um, five retail spaces, three of which front on Lake Street and two of which front on 17th. Next slide. The applications required include a conditional use permit to increase the maximum allowed height from three stories to, or 42 feet to five stories or 51.2 feet, variance to increase the uh, maximum floor area ratio from 2.04 to 2.64, Variance to reduce the minimum dwelling unit size for one bedroom units from 500 square feet to 451 square feet and site plan review and the alley vacation. Next slide. So uh, here's just an aerial view of the site. Um, the 1626 East Lake Street site is currently vacant um, and the uh, 2940 17th Avenue South site is occupied by a surface parking lot. Next slide. This is the site plan proposed. You'll see indicated here the uh, partial alley vacation. So the applicant is proposing five parking spaces that would be accessed off of the remaining alley. Um, the current alley is a T-shaped alley and the applicant has proposed to vacate one full arm of the alley, though the, um, the western portion of the vacation would uh, be, um, there would be a split access easement with the Salvation Army to allow for them to continue to use that um, as well as the applicants. Next slide. Uh, here's a floor plan that shows the configuration of the first floor, including those five commercial spaces, um, a community room, um, an office for the residential uh, buildings. The building is set back from the north property line to uh, preserve the required setbacks there. Uh, next slide. Um, 
And then you can actually forward two slides. Uh, these are just the floor plans of the upper floors. Um, next slide. And the elevations are shown here and in the next slide. And then um, if you'll forward to the, the following slide, that, uh, there are some uh, renderings of the proposed building. So this building in particular, um, the conditional use permit for the increase in height and the variance for the increase in floor area ratio both have to do with the C1 zoning and the fact that C1 does not allow the density that is called for in the 2040 plan. Um, both the height and the FAR are likely consistent, even though we haven't um, we haven't formalized the floor area ratios that will be allowed in these districts in the future. The proposal does seem consistent with what we um, would likely expect. So both the conditional use permit and uh, FAR variants are um, uh, compatible with the 2040 guidance. In addition, the uh, unit size variants. Um, Staff found that to be reasonable given the narrow uh, width of the parcel and the need to have a double loaded or the desire to have a double loaded corridor on upper step or upper stories. Um, and uh, staff is also recommending approval of the site plan review and alley vacation. If you flip to the next slide, there are some conditions of approval, um, mostly that have to do with the site plan review. Um, and just ensuring that the, the project does not have uh, blank walls on um, the, I believe it's the north elevation and uh, the, that it provide canopy trees. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Commissioners, are there any questions of staff? Commissioner Smiley. Hi, Mr. Chair um, and um, Lindsay, thank you for your presentation. I do have a question about the alley vacation and kind of wondering um, how um, is that alley currently used and uh, what are the, um, from the staff perspective, um, the uh, potential implications of closing uh, that alley altogether? And, um, and I understand that it wouldn't necessarily change traffic too much, but I'm still kind of wondering what the use is currently. So the if if, um, if IT could go to slide number four in that presentation, um, the alley is currently a T-shaped alley, so uh, there's currently a connection from 16th through to 17th, and then that splits to go north along the residential alley. Um, my understanding is that the northern portion of the alley is primarily used for residential uses. Um, however, my understanding from the neighborhood is that there are a lot of concerns about traffic at the, um, there's a, a grocery on 16th and there are lots of issues with traffic um, cutting through Salvation Army parking lot and cutting through that alley um, to get around congestion on East Lake Street. So there was some um, hope that potentially closing off that arm of the alley would reduce um, would reduce traffic in the alley for folks who are using that as a shortcut. Very good, thank you. Uh, commissioners, are there any other questions? Seeing no other questions of staff, uh, I'll ask the applicant uh, to introduce themselves if they're on the line and uh, fill in any other details if you wish. Clay Dutra, plus star six yeah. to unmute. Yes, I'm here. Uh, my name is Clay Dutra, and um, I'm representing the, the owner as uh, the applicant for this process. So I, first I want to thank Lindsay uh, very much for the great job she did. Uh, it was a long process. Um, so we worked together solving all the issues that came up. I also thank uh, the neighborhood, uh, several meetings that we went through trying to accommodate the project and thank the commissioners for uh, 
for being here and discussing these items uh, with us today. So uh, this project, uh, Commissioner Smile asked, uh, what the alley is being used for today? I have the answer for it. Uh, the alley today is being used for drug dealing and prostitution and nothing else. Uh, also, uh, we have been finding lots of garbage on, on that portion of the alley, on that portion of the land. And being a three-way alley, we have a problem that we have traffic going through. Traffic that try to avoid the light, the close, the red light on Lake Street and 17th. When the light is closed, traffic traveling 17th uh, southbound will cut into the alley through the parking lot of Salvation Army, who also uh, were having issues with that traffic coming through because they have kids uh, a lot of times there. And we 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 had some study done and we, my, myself, we stopped there uh, in a couple of days and made videos of this happening. It really happens. Traffic coming from 17 uh, goes into the alley, out to, out to the Salvation Army, also goes into the alley and out into 16. Even traffic coming from Lake Street when the sign is red, uh, traveling west, will cut into Salvation Army, out into the alley, drive into 17. Um, other than that, we are uh, pr uh, proposing a very nice building with 36 units, uh, which one is gonna be accessible and all of the others is gonna be type B convertible units. We are offering 10% of them affordable. And we, our plan there is to clean up that corner and put cameras and security and lightning and then make that corner uh, beautiful again. So uh, that's our proposition is uh, a nice uh, building with a lot of amenity. We are using about 20% of this area of the building for community spaces with a community room, we have gym, we have decks, uh, community decks on top of, we have a backyard with table and recreational uh, uh, area. And also we have a bike shop, we have a bike parking. Um, and uh, that is uh, that is some of the things we, we've done. We changed the project from the beginning. We had bigger uh, commercial units. Uh, through discussion with the neighborhood, trying to accommodate for, for one of the issues that came out that was parking for the building. Even we still uh, supplying more parking spots than, recomm than, than recommended by the code. Uh, we still were concerned about some of the concerns of the neighborhood, which was parking. So we changed that instead of doing bigger uh, retail units, we, we made them smaller and we are shooting for uh, for offices like lawyer offices, accounting, and chiropractic and insurance agents perhaps. So something that will not draw much of uh, parking and neither loading or unloading necessary on the, on the neighborhood. Um, I think, um, I think that's about what I have to start, and I am open to questions. Commissioners, are there any questions of the applicant? Uh, Commissioner Dunnick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Commissioner Dunnick, here, just a quick question. Uh, you said you're representing the owner. Who, who is the owner? The owner is uh, Gorgi Dieng. Thank you. You're welcome. Commissioners, any further questions for the applicant? Uh, Commissioner Marwa. Uh, yes, hi, a quick question. Has there been any opposition from the neighborhood about blocking off this alleyway as far as street access goes? Yes. There have been few neighbors uh, that uh, were opposite to this, and that, and I heard that. I never 
met any of these neighbors in person uh, because we had five different meetings at the neighborhood association meetings and none of those that are in opposition to showed up to discuss the 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 project to ask questions and to see what we could offer so we we heard of we heard through emails and we heard through other neighbors but uh i i didn't i did not met any of uh of the few two or three i'm not sure who did not support the allocation thank you commissioners any further mm -hmm. questions Uh, seeing none, thank you very much. Uh, and I know that we have a couple other uh, folks on the line. Uh, I'll let the uh, clerk and staff help us introduce those folks. If you can state your name and address for the record. The next speaker in queue is Rob Zernick. Rob Zernick, press star six. <clears throat> state your name for the record and make your comment. Bob Zernick, if you are talking, we cannot hear you. Star six will pull you off mute. Hello, somebody there? All right, why don't we move on to our next speaker and we can always go back and see you. Hi, I'm, I'm on. Sorry about that. Rob Cernick here. Perfect. Okay, Rob Cernick, 2931 16th Avenue South. Uh, I'm, I can actually speak about some of the issues around the alley instead of uh, talking about some random visits over here. Um, yeah, uh, just I, I don't want to revisit stuff around the opposition to this project, but it's not true that it was just two or three people that nobody had ever shown up to meetings. A lot of people had actually gone to meetings and spoken about some of these things, but I, I don't want to revisit any of that. Um, and so I, I do appreciate uh, Clay being here and, and talking about stuff and, and yes, making some adjustments to um, to to based on some of the issues and concerns from the residents i know there were emails that had gone out and there was a petition uh, that had gone out mostly around the affordability issues um, my neighborhood is a very very poor neighborhood um, and we're talking you know some of these uh the penthouse i believe being at close to a million dollars something like that so you know, we were very concerned about the affordability and sort of the displacement issues around this project. But I'm here to speak about a couple of things that the Planning Commission um, can be helpful with. First, I'd like to speak about the trees and the landscaping. And I'd really like to encourage you to um, continue with uh, uh, asking for trees. Uh, we don't have a lot of tree cover over here. Uh, this neighborhood, if you look on some of the air pollution maps, is some of the dirtiest air um, in the in the city, and it also coincidentally has some of the least amount of tree cover. So anything we can do to create tree cover, especially this large building, is going to create a lot of urban heat mass, and so we already have a hot area that's going to be made even hotter. By this, uh, by this building. So I'd really like you to um, think about making sure trees, uh, shade trees are part of the landscape. I'd like to speak about this alley though. Uh, we have a lot of concerns um, and it's not just uh, drug dealing and prostitution that happens uh, in our alley. Um, it, a lot of residents, we do use our alleys uh, over here. One of the reasons, because 16th and 17th Avenue have a lot of, 16th Avenue has a lot of traffic congestion because of uh, a grocery store on the corner over here. And uh, a lot of um, customers of that grocery store use the North and South Alley to get around 16th Avenue. 
to cut down to 29th Street. Uh, and yes, a lot of people do use that alley to cut off of Lake Street and to cut east and west. Um, closing that alley off on one end is really just going to increase um, our livability, a lot of our neighbors, their kids play in the alleys because they can't play on 16th Avenue because of the traffic and because of the congestion. Um, we'd ask you to explore uh, possibly closing that southern end, making it a dead end alley. It practically is a dead end alley. It only runs uh, between Lake Street and 29th before it hits the Greenway. So for all intents and purposes, uh, it doesn't cut through. It really only needs access for residents and for garbage collection. And that could be dealt with by closing off our southern end of the alley. That would discourage people from trying to cut through and attempt to uh, create a shortcut over here. Um, a couple other things. I'd like to um, think about some of the street designs, especially designing for crime reduction, um, really having eyes on the street. I know there's a lot of empty walls um, over here. Empty walls are just places where people kind of tuck away. And anytime you can have windows so that the people inside can kind of see what's happening outside, uh, that could be a solution to some of these, the, the big empty wall spaces that we're talking about and looking at in this design. Um, and we do have uh, other neighbors and other residents that have shared these concerns. Um, it's kind of an interesting meeting for this. I know uh, other folks wouldn't have been able to make it to the, this meeting as it was, even if it was in person. Um, and there were some language issues and technology access issues for some, some other neighbors. So I'm, I'm glad to be able to speak here. I think one of my other neighbors might be on the line uh, to maybe talk about this too. Um, yeah, that's that's all I have. Very good. Thank you very much for, for those comments. Um, I will defer to your staff for our next testifier. Please state your name and address for the record. The final speaker is Joshua Nathan. Joshua Nathan, press star six to unmute and state your name and address for the record. Hi, good afternoon. Joshua Nathan, 2932 17th Avenue South. Um, thank you very much um, for allowing me this opportunity to speak with concern about the proposed development. Um, I really only have two concerns, um, although that would really be in addition to the concerns that Rob Cesaric just spoke of as well. Um, I have um, two specific concerns, maybe the first one might be easily addressed by the applicant. And the second one, I think, is really more of a troubling issue for me. Um, and I know that many of my neighbors have spoken about this as well amongst ourselves. Um, we'll start with the easy one. Um, I look pretty closely at the proposed building plans, and I do appreciate that the 2940 portion of the property, 2940 17th Avenue, which is just um, two short doors down from me, um, that it does have a shorter height um, to um, really fit the um, concept of the use plan for the area, and I appreciate that. Um, however, I am a little bit concerned looking at that um, in that it appears to offer a space for an additional um, deck or outdoor upper floor space atop that um, third floor um, to possibly be developed in the future. I'm wondering if um, um, after my comments, it might be possible to receive some sort of assurance from the applicant that that is not in the works. Um, we would really like to not have um, common outdoor space towering over our property. Um, so that's my first concern, one that I think is probably easily addressed. Um, my second concern is a little bit more difficult, and I think Rob touched on this a little bit as well, um, but I want to um, really drill down a little bit more specifically into this. Um, given the density and number of units in the, um, in the building, um, and given that um, while some of these units are going to be affordable housing designated, and, and I appreciate that, enough of them will not be where I really do have to wonder how many of these middle or upper income um, occupants of these units would realistically not have automobiles of their own. Um, and should they bring their automobiles with them, I'm wondering where exactly they would park them. 
Um, it doesn't appear that the plan submitted really takes resident parking in mind, and, and I certainly understand the concept of a transit corridor. Um, but I would point out to, um, to those um, that are interested that um, this neighborhood actually has a very high um, density of renters versus owners. Um, so we already on 16th and 17th and 18th Avenue um, don't really have a lot of street parking as it is. I'm looking out at an empty street right now because we have construction going on, but typically it's very full of people. Um, I, I'm trying to imagine the impact of having as many as three dozen people um, and their family members looking for a place to park their cars at night. Um, it's primarily for that reason that I speak in opposition to this project that's currently planned. Um, but those are my two concerns. Um, so that's pretty much all I have to offer. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, is th this is the end of our uh, of our speakers, correct? Yes, there's no more speakers. All right, uh, there are no more speakers. I'm sorry. Oh, we'll May I just say one more thing? I'm I'm really sorry. This is Rob Cernig uh, again. I I just I'm wanted sorry, to say that we're, we're just a lot of people one one time to to touch okay. Our, uh, thank you. Sorry, sorry about that. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, uh, all right. So post public hearing. Um, if I could have the uh, applicant address the um, test first question regarding the rooftop of the three floor section if the applicant is still on the line. Yes, star I am six here. to unmute yourself. Very good. Yes, it's great. So uh, thank you, Rob and Ann and Josh. I appreciate your input. Um, and uh, I can assure that uh, it isn't gonna be a deck. Never we thought of being a deck. It is a roof there. I don't think it's even good for the project to have that as a deck, so we are not gonna do a deck there. I can assure you that. Uh, another thing I would like to talk about is that uh, all of the units, uh, the plan rental value is between 1300 and 1600, which itself seems very affordable. Uh, when uh, Mr. Rob said something about a million dollar uh, penthouse, I, I don't, I don't, I cannot uh, uh, relate to that. We are not building a unit for sale. Uh, it's all going to be rental, and then uh, they are going to be pretty affordable already based on the market prices that we have been seeing for rental on units around Minneapolis. Um, so they are going to be built for the community that do not have a car. We're going to shoot for people that do not have a car that can live and want to live without a car in that neighborhood. Uh, we are offering, like I said before, a biking shop, biking parking, a bunch of biking parking, and then we're still offering few, few houses, uh, even though the code does not require for them. Uh, we, are, we, are, we do have few of them. Of course, it won't be enough if everybody wants to have a car on the building, but we do not uh, will not encourage residents with cars to be in first line of uh, of uh, renting the place. Um, one last thing I want to talk about the owner. Uh, commissioner asked about who was the owner. Gorgi Jiang. He's very uh, he's he's very into helping communities. Uh, and then when we first found this land, he visited. He have a, a hair salon in the corner of that, uh, one of those corners that he goes uh, or used to go. Now he's not playing here anymore, but he used to go and visit that corner frequently. He knows the difficulties of that corner. And that was one of the reasons why he wanted to get that land is to try to improve and help uh, here, the country that he is getting his bread from and not only Africa where he's from. So he also wants to do something not only uh, looking for profit, but to help in the community. That is one of his main goals, is to help, to give back to the community what he's getting from this country. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, Commissioner Lufke-Pierre. 
Yeah, I had a question for either the applicant or for Lindsay. Could um, you guys address the streets and the public right of way in terms of uh, what uh, what possibilities there are for mitigating the heat island effect that one of the speakers talked about? Uh, I, Lindsay, would you help me here? I didn't understand very well the question. Sure. And, and um, Lindsay, Lindsay, oh. if you could if you could touch on just while you're at this, I think touch on some of the conditions within the site plan review related both to the landscaping uh, and to the blank wall conditions, which were brought up by one of the testifiers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the um, the project in terms of so the C1 zoning district does not have a uh, um, maximum impervious surface area. So the applicant has proposed uh, 1,200 square feet of landscape area, um, 37 shrubs, and they did propose two trees, but the trees didn't meet the requirements of uh, canopy trees. Um, and and I'm, uh, I apologize, Commissioner Loop Keep here. There, uh, I did not include the landscape plan in the um, presentation here. Um, but so they are meeting you know, with the condition for the two canopy trees to ensure that the two trees that they provide meet that definition. They will be meeting the requirements in terms of landscaping. Um, let's see. And then as far as the condition, so the applicant, um, the, the, the building is built at a zero lot line bordering the property to the west, the, um, the surface parking lot for the Salvation Army. Um, and within the last few years, the city has uh, reduced uh, the requirement for uh, side yard setbacks for buildings that have um, uh, commercial uh, zoning to allow for the building of a consistent street wall. That is something that we like to encourage where it's possible. And so the applicant has proposed to build the first floor at a zero lot line. Um, the the building code does not allow openings on, on those walls that are built at a zero lot line. So there are blank walls on the west elevation that staff is recommending approval of um, with the condition that the applicant provide a mural um, to mitigate that blank wall condition. Uh, while there are blank walls in terms of windows, there are um, openings. So and there are windows at that uh, that south uh, that south side on the corner to hopefully provide some eyes on the street as well as windows on the residential floors above, um, including some uh, rooftop amenity space that would look over that space as well to get those eyes on the street. And then um, I guess if if uh, if IT were to scroll to the um, tenth slide, the condition that staff is recommending with regards to um, blank walls had to do with the north elevation, the fourth and fifth floors on the north elevation, each only have one uh, window. So staff was recommending that those um, that that big blank wall um, be mitigated on that floor by adding additional windows there. So Lindsay, in the areas that you're recommending murals, are those potential areas where in the future a building might be built right up against it then? Uh, yeah, so that that's that's the um, that that would be the the hope is that eventually there may be a building, uh, you know, if the Salvation Army site was ever redeveloped, there could be something built there that would um, basically butt up to this building. And then so just to follow up on my on my first question just real quick then so is the applicant open to adding additional canopy trees uh in the public right of way um just given the lot constraints and that the additional cup yes we are we are very very in in uh, accordance with adding trees as most as we can making that area green and clean that's our idea and safe and then i i think i didn't mention each of the 36 units every single one of them have a balcony that hangs over uh, the wall of the building so we do have all of the units with balconies with eyes on the street and lots of lights around uh, the building as well uh, another thing about the the, the wall on uh, on salvation army two things about it is that uh, first of all we have planned after Lindsay proposed, we have plans to use to do a mural of a team of a basketball because Gorgi is uh, 
is uh, donating a basket, a half a court into the parking lot of Salvation Army to the Salvation Army kids to play, and therefore he's gonna then put a, a proposing a, t a basketball team on this mural, signed by him perhaps. Uh, and then also we have been uh, uh, working with Gorgi and Salvation Army uh, to redevelop Salvation Army's uh, uh, portion because they are having issues. Uh, special now with uh, with what we are going through with coronavirus. They are having issues with uh, space for storing food, for distributing food, for uh, for shelter for people. And uh, we are working with them, trying to develop a sort of a plan. We are sketching, we are just starting it, and we didn't propose anything to the city yet. But we might add on top of their building and perhaps on the parking lot, uh, some sort of a gymnasium and more classrooms and more rooms and kitchens and space for them to be able to handle situations like we are going through now uh, a little bit better. Perfect. Okay, cool. Thank well, thanks. I, I appreciate the the balconies and the the added trees especially. So thank you for that. And uh, follow up with staff in terms of what the changes in that regard are. Thanks. Mm -hmm. thank Commissioner you. Meyer. Thank you. My question was also about the canopy trees. So in the staff recommendation, they're saying not less than two canopy trees. Um, is the applicant saying that they could accommodate more than that? And if so, can we um, amend that to add a, a greater number? Yes, we can. Uh, we have space for more. So we, we only need to save a, a space for the snow piling. And uh, we, we have a more space in this landscaping area. We have over a thousand square feet of landscaping that we are proposing. We had some seatings and then some space for perhaps uh, reading or, 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 or yoga or, or um, even a barbecue, an outside sort of, um, of entertainment. But we do still have space for trees and we are open to add trees uh, and however, many it fits perhaps uh, as the commissioners recommend or suggest. Good, thank you. Yeah, if, I think, uh, uh, Lindsay, just for clarification, our, uh, the requirement within code, uh, which, is, which is kind of what we can suggest at this point is two uh, canopy trees based on the uh, code requirements. Are we allowed to make a condition to have more than that? Uh, we would have to tie it to. Uh, we'd have to generate a uh, rationale for for that condition okay. based on the applications. That's correct, Commissioner Rockwell. Uh, with the proposed staff condition, that application would be meeting their canopy tree requirement in site plan review. Okay, very good, uh, Commissioner Marwa. Yeah, hi, I was just reading through the, the staff report and I want to understand the affordability that we're talking about. Is it affordable because of this small unit size or is there any type of set aside for affordable housing in this project? Because calculating it still looks like it's about $3 a square foot, so which is not very affordable. So, so uh, what is uh, this amount, six, uh, 13 to 16, are what we are planning to offer the units that are non-affordable perhaps to me it seems like they are pretty cheap considered to the ones i saw around there but we are required to have 10 percent of units to be affordable and that is according to a formula that the city uh have to calculate the amount and then we are going to be doing that to offer those 10 percent of units as the, through the affordable uh program the building does not uh, is not involved in any funds or any uh, special market uh, special uh, loans for affordability through the city or state or federal so we are doing uh, the percentage that is required by the city of Minneapolis uh, in, uh, to attend the affordability on that okay and then uh, my, so I, my I, just a quick, uh, I forgot to mention that uh, why 16, 13 and 16 seems low to me. Uh, I didn't mention that every unit have the laundry 
in their unit. So all of the units have its own laundry. All of the units have its own balconies, and it's going to be a glass balcony. And uh, also, every unit have its uh, its own uh, heating and cooling system. So. And are the are good. the ten percent set aside that you're that you're doing are those going to be on the smaller end of the units? They have to be a mix of them, so okay. they can't be. I think there is also some requirement about that, but it is a percentage of each size. Okay, good. Um, and then my last question was just about if there is space um, while we're talking about landscaping about um, added trash. If you have all the four additional retail spaces out there, you're gonna have 36 units of people, bikers coming through, every, you know, all the people using the different spaces would just, I would just suggest thinking about um, adding extra trash receptacles to this plan. Right, yes. We, we have planned already, uh, and now we have uh, also trash chutes through the building, and we have uh, enclosed area for the trash and a, and a room inside of the building where you can roll off and in the trash cans. So we've we've thought and we've put thought into it, and then uh, I think it looks pretty lo looks pretty good. Okay, I meant on the on the street side as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, yeah, thank you. And uh, Lindsay, uh, is there staff clarification here? Yeah, so the project has 36 dwelling units. It's not subject to inclusionary housing. So um, just in terms of uh, affordability that is required by the city, there um, are there's no affordability requirement from the city, nor is any affordability conditioned as part of this application presently. Very good, uh, and, and nor do we have the uh, apparent authority to do that, correct? based Correct. on lack of, of right. Okay. Uh, commissioners, are there any further questions for staff or for the applicants? Uh, or would somebody like to start us off with a motion here? Commissioner Smiley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I move that uh, we approve item 26, um, A, B, C, D, and E as recommended by staff. We have a motion by Commissioner Smiley uh, to approve fall applications, uh, A, B, C, D, and E with staff recommended conditions. Commissioner Dunnick. Second. We have a motion and a second. Commissioners, is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk, please call the roll. Caprini. Aye. Dunnick. Aye. Smiley. Aye. Lipke Pier. Aye. Marwa. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Olson. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Sweezy. Aye. Nine zero. That motion carries. Uh, and that concludes our business with item number 26. Uh, Kimberly, are there any updates from CPED staff at this time? <laughs> Uh, first of all, just a huge thank you to all of you for your patience as we transitioned to virtual meetings. I think our first one was a success, so thank you uh, to all of you and to our IT team. Um, looking forward, we may be putting the, um, just a moment. I've managed to keep my own children downstairs this whole time <laughs> and hope that I right? get some credit for that. Uh, just poor timing there, but um, our next cycle will be for the April 27th meeting. We may also be trying to get that April 30th cow meeting back on your calendars. And if we're able to do that, I will coordinate that um, and give you all updates via email between now and then. Very good. Uh, well, and 
you know, on behalf of the commissioners, uh, thank you so much to, to all the staff, uh, CPAD staff, the clerk's office, uh, all of our IT folks uh, who helped make this happen. This was uh, smoother than some of the public uh, in-person hearings we've had. So um, thank you all. Uh, this was great and glad that this worked. With that, the meeting is adjourned.